today we are going to be taking a look at the site of the former Ludlow Street Jail on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, which would later become Seward High School, where many famous people attended. Stay tuned to find out about the history of the building that is right in front of me. The building that you see in front of me looks just like a prison, doesn't it? But what is funny is that the prison itself was torn down in 1927 and it was replaced by this structure which was completed in 1929. The new structure is a school, which I guess is a different type of prison. The Ludlow Street Jail was completed in 1862 and had been overseen by William Boss Tweed of Tammany Hall, the corrupt New York political organization. That was somewhat ironic, as you will find out later in the story. The jail was a rather more upscale place of incarceration, far different to the tombs which sat not too far away, southwest from here, in the heart of the Five Points neighborhood. That was the neighborhood that was shown in the movie The Gangs of New York, where Jim Broadbent played the role of Boss Tweed. Far ahead of its time, this jail had long barred windows that let in light and air, a much needed luxury in the sweltering New York summers. What was the purpose of this jail though? Well, unlike the jail in the Five Points neighborhood, the Ludlow Jail was originally planned as a debtor's jail, though obviously over the years, it did house some less than savoury characters as well. For the most part though, this was like a country club for gentlemen. Just like the corruption from Tammany Hall, if you had money, you could buy your way to a better lifestyle. The jail had a billiards table, and it even opened a grocery store in one of the unused cells. In 1873, the walls of corruption at Tammany Hall began to crumble, and Boss Tweed was found guilty of 204 counts and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. This was reduced by a high court, and he spent a year in the tombs. After his release from jail, the state of New York tried to recover six million dollars in embezzled funds by Tweed. And as he was not able to come up with the three million dollars bail, he was jailed at Ludlow Street Jail in 1875, which, after all, had been built as a debtor's jail. Tweed of course had the resources and he paid his way to having the warden's office converted into his personal jail cell. He was also allowed to leave the jail for home visits. It was on one of these visits that Tweed fled the country to Spain, where he worked as a common seaman. He was recognized there from a political cartoon of all things about a year later, when he was returned to New York and sent back to the Ludlow Street Jail. Tweed never lived as a free man again. He died right here in the prison that he had personally overseen the building of at the age of 55 in 1878. A little side note, if you have seen the film The Gangs of New York, the main character of that film, Bill the Butcher, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, is actually buried in the same cemetery as William Boss Tweed. That will make for a future New York story. The other famous inhabitant of Ludlow Street Jail was the first woman to run for president, Victoria Woodhull. When Hillary Clinton ran for president, it was initially stated that she was the first woman to run for president. But that was later slightly changed to read first woman nominated by a major party. 
However, nobody challenged it. To this day, most people think that she was the first woman to run for president. It somewhat brings back memories of Rosa Parks. Now, not to discredit Rosa any, but she wasn't the first black woman to refuse to give up her seat on a bus. That honour went to Claudette Colvin some nine months earlier than Rosa Parks did the same thing. The difference being that Colvin was a schoolgirl, whereas Rosa Parks was already a civil rights activist. Woodhull was nominated in 1872 by the Equal Rights Party as their presidential nominee. And coincidentally, her running mate was Frederick Douglass, who would become the first African American to be nominated for vice president. This was of course 47 years before women even had the right to vote. And to ensure that Victoria Woodhull didn't even attempt to vote, a few days before the 1872 election, she was arrested and put in the Ludlow Street Jail, where she was held for the next month. In the 1872 election, Victoria Woodhull received no electoral votes. However, there was at least one man in Texas who admitted to voting for her. A protest vote against incumbent President Ulysses Grant. When the jail closed in 1927, the building was torn down. And for the next 18 months, this new building was built in its place. Seward High School right now is called Seward Park Campus, which encompasses five different schools within its facility. However, it was originally a comprehensive high school, which had relocated in 1929 from its previous home just a couple of blocks south of here. As with all schools in New York City, Seward High School had a wealth of famous talented alumni that once walked through its main door. But it is hard to say who is the most famous. Was it perhaps Tony Curtis? Or maybe it was Walter Mattel. One of the most intriguing alumni of Seward Park High School is Stu Unger. Stu didn't graduate Seward Park High School, instead he dropped out of school and learned to play cards from his father's gambling establishment. And he was so good that by the time he was 18, he had been taken under the wing of organised crime figures. Stu went on to become what is considered to be the greatest poker player of all time. He was New York brash, had a prodigy level IQ, but he was also the victim of a hard-playing lifestyle who used copious amounts of drugs. He lived a fast lifestyle that was a continuous cycle of winning big and then blowing it all away. After winning the World Series of Poker in 1980 and 81, a friend bankrolled his entry into the tournament 16 years later, where he once again won the World Series of Poker. This time, however, the years of abuse showed on Stu's appearance. It was believed that he wore sunglasses during the event to hold his nose together as his nostrils had collapsed through years of cocaine abuse. The comeback kid would die the following year of a heart attack, brought on by decades of drug abuse. His story is definitely one worth checking out on YouTube. It is an amazing story to listen to. Here is a montage of all the other famous alumni of Seward Park High School. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider hitting the like button. And if you wish to see more videos like this, then go ahead and subscribe. I will have plenty more coming up.